Scourge is absolutely broken right now. And I don't say that lightly. The condition Scourge build is currently so overpowered that it is easily one of the best builds Guilders 2 has ever seen. The super pro players are currently doing about 49k DPS on this build. And that is absolutely ridiculous. To give you some context, doing 25k DPS is usually plenty to kill most raid bosses in the game. And back in Path of Fire, the really optimized builds did between 30 and 35k DPS. Now here's the twist. Very often these really strong DPS builds are also really difficult to play, but not this time. Even I was able to do 45k DPS with this build in just one hour of practice. Now, I do play this game a lot, but I am not some raid speedrunner, and honestly, Scourge isn't really a spec I usually play. I'm going to teach you how to do a ridiculous damage on Scourge in about 5 minutes, and I promise you, it really won't be that difficult. But first, a disclaimer. This build is most definitely going to get nerfed. 49k DPS is ridiculous and there is like no way it is going to last. However, I still think you should consider learning it. It is currently so overpowered that even if it gets nerfed, it will probably still be very, very good. And with that out of the way, let's actually get started. Condition Scourge was already a, a really good build before Secrets of the Obscure came out, but Secrets of the Obscure added two things which really took the build to the next level. In the past, Scourge didn't really have access to a good second Condi weapon, so you just kind of camped your Scepter and your Torch and you never really weapon swaps. Like sometimes you would take a weapon just so you could CC, but for the most part you would just camp your Scepter. But with Sodo, you can now use the Harbinger's Pistol on Scourge. So Scourge now has two good weapons and you have more good skills to use for damage. Then secondly, Soto added the Relic system. We're using the Relic of Akeem, which basically means that whenever you do any hard CC skill, like a knockdown or a pull, we put even more conditions on our enemy. So now that we've got the pistol and the Akeem Relic, Scourge has gotten super good. Here is the build we are using. This has been the de facto Condi Scourge build for a long time, so if you've played it before, nothing is really different here. We're using Viper stats on all of our gear, Trapper runes, Torment and Bursting Sigils, and the Akeem Relic. Now, let's talk about how to actually play this build. I'm gonna keep this pretty easy for now. I'm sure that there are some super advanced tricks you can do to get more damage, but I'm just gonna teach you how I got 45k DPS and that's like 90% of the way there. The basic idea of this rotation is actually very simple. In both weapon sets you want to use skill 3 and skill 2 twice. So when we swap to our scepter, you want to start off by doing 3-2. Then you hang out in Scepter for a little bit, and then once those skills are off cooldown again, you use free 2 again, and then you weapon swap. So you use free 2 when you enter the weapon, and then once they're back off of cooldown, you use them again, and then you swap. For your pistol, it is the same idea, but this time 2 comes off cooldown a little bit before free. The general idea is still the same though. You start off by doing free 2 then after a little while your 2 skill comes back and you use it, and then a little bit later your 3 skill comes back and you use it, and then you weapon swap. This is the basis of your rotation. Easy enough right? You just do 3 and 2 twice, then you swap and then you do it again. Now let's expand upon this a little bit. When you're not busy casting 3 and 2, you also want to cast skill 4 and skill 5, and also your Signet of Spies. This is just extra damage, and you might as well cast it while you're waiting around. Pro Gamer Intermission! If you are a bit more experienced and you want even more damage, try not to interrupt your Scepter auto attack chains. If you are new to this, honestly, don't worry about it for now. Even if you don't do this, you will still do a lot of damage on this build. Alright, so 3-2 in both weapons, and you cast 4, 5, and Signet of Spite while you're waiting in between. Let's expand this a little bit more again. A lot of your damage as a Scourge comes from your shades. You spawn a shade by pressing F1 and you want to make sure you have always at least one shade up. On this build we have traits which will give us extra damage while we have a shade spawned. So you always want to make sure that at least one shade is spawned. If you notice that you only have one shade and if it's been a little while since you pressed F1, just press F1 again to spawn a new one and prevent your shade counter from going to zero. 
As you play more Scourge, you will kind of get a feeding for this. But yeah, just try to make sure you always have one shade up. With your shades, you can also use shade skills. These skills happen both around you and also at any shades that you have. So if you are hugging the bulls or if one of your shades is at the bulls, you are good. The most important part here is that you constantly press your F2 skill off cooldown. This actually doesn't take any cast time, it's like instant. So no matter what you are doing, just hit that F2 as quickly as you can. You always want to be casting this immediately when you can. You also want to use your F5 skill. With one of our traits, Plague Sending, F5 will transfer conditions from us to our enemy. The trick is to do this little combo. You press Bloodless Power to boost conditions on yourself, and whenever it's almost done casting, you quickly hit F5 to make sure that those condies go to your enemy. Alright, that might have been a lot. Let's recap. You cast 3 and 2 twice, then you weapon swap. In between, you also want to cast 4, 5 and Signet of Spite off cooldown. While you're doing this, try to keep at least one shade up. Then, you also want to press F2 instantly the second it comes off cooldown, and whenever F5 comes off cooldown, you can do the cool combo with Bloodless Power. That is almost it for this build. You also want to press your Haunt skill of cooldown. That is the skill that you get after you summon a Shadow Fiend. This skill will give us more life force, and that means we can keep spamming our shade skills a little bit more. Haunt doesn't take any cast time, so you can just kind of press the button whenever you see it's available. Finally, you also want to use your elite play clans while you're standing on the boss for even more sweet damage. And that is all you need to know to play this new broken Scourge build. If you do this, you should be able to hit 45k DPS on the golem just like me. If you practice this for a little while, it really becomes second nature, I promise. And then, if you could do a raid, a strike or a fractal, all the bosses will melt to your amazing DPS. If you want to see more easy build explanations like this, definitely let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, the best way to ask me is to either join my Discord or stop by my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash Dramanity. I stream Guilders 2 five nights a week. And that is it for me today. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you in Zeria.